So now we're going to try to get the actual texture itself working. I've added a sampler, um, and a sampler means a texture that we're going to go look up from, and I've added a line of code which uh, goes and looks this up. And I've taken this from listing 5.7 in the book. The description of this starts around page 160, um, and the program is texturequad.js, right? So I'm using this as my sample of how to get textures because the book is telling me what, what am I doing. So I essentially I need to add this thing, which is the texture we're going to pass in, and we need to look up. This says my color is going to be looked up from the sampler at the UV coordinates that, that I've passed in to, to this. And of course, we need to uh, declare this sampler and use this sampler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same listing from the book, and I'm going to copy a bunch of uh, code into into here. And so there's two functions the book defines as part of as part of this example. One is init textures and one is load textures. And so I've just gone to this example, this texture quad JavaScript, and I've copied these two things exactly. So if you're following along with me, you can just copy these two things from there from their example code. And I'm going to try to um, to run this. Uh, oh, and I've done one more thing. One more thing. In my main, I've added this init, init textures call so that it will call init textures and hopefully load some stuff. Unfortunately, when I go try to run this thing, um, it tells me it can't get the storage location of use sampler. And this is just because I've used a different name. So if we look at what I named it in my shader, I chose to name this thing use sampler zero. And this is because I might want to later have multiple textures. There's going to be texture zero, texture one, texture two. I might have multiple textures on different objects. So I've just given it a name here that tells me that this is texture zero. So I can later have another one, which is texture one, and decide what do I want to do. So I'm going to go fix up those names. So over here is where I'm having this error uh, when I'm trying to declare this thing. And so that's just because I need to be looking up use sampler zero. And I'm going to change it in the rest of the places also. So I cleaned up all of these uh, sampler things. I grabbed the example image that the book is using. You could use any texture. Make sure it's a power of two. So 128 by 128, 256 by 256, 512 by 512, this kind of thing. Um, and I've set it in the local directory and I've set my image source to that. So this was another change that I had to make. And look at that. I've now got textures on my object. This is essentially all I had to do. So let's look a little bit at what this function is doing uh, so that we can go ahead and clean it up and get it integrated with our code in a better way. So this init texture function is taking a GL context. So we've got this as a global. So we're later, I'm later going to delete this thing from being a past parameter because I have it already defined as a global variable. We're going to create a texture in this init textures, and then we're going to get the location, get the uniform location. So this is something that we've typically been doing in a different place in our code. We have a function for setting up all of these getting getting locations and passing it back. So we're going to want to move that over into the other location in our code. So we're going to take this piece and we're going to move it. So remember, I have it connect variables to GLSL. And so I've now just inside of this function taken that same piece of code that you samplers and moved it over here. So just so we have it organized in, into a single location. So let's look at what's happening uh, going on in this init texture. So now we're going to have a new image. This is a JavaScript command. This is nothing about WebGL and interacting with 3D graphics. We're loading an image through JavaScript. Um, and if we aren't able to create a new image in our JavaScript, then we're going to print some error. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a function that's going to run when our image is done loading. So remember, your image is stored on a web server someplace. And our web server may, may be on a slow link. It may be slow to load. So it may be a couple of seconds until this image is available to us. So we have to say, we, can, we can't try to immediately take this image and start passing it to the GPU because it hasn't been loaded yet across the web page. So what this command does, it's, it's a function that runs after the loading has completed. And what is that function? We're going to declare an anonymous function here. And we're going to say that whenever we're done loading the image, run our function for loading the image. And here's our function here. So 
this later function is going to deal with all of the information about passing it to uh, WebGL. So I, I'm going to give this a more descriptive name. I'm going to call this um, send the texture to GLSL. And I'm going to I'm going to change this also. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to specify an image source. So this is what's actually going to tell the image, this class that's defined in JavaScript to load. So I've told it what image to load. In this case, um, it's this file name, and it's going to start loading when that happens. And when it finishes, it's going to call this. And then this init texture is just going to return. At the time this init texture returns, the image hasn't loaded yet. We don't have a texture. Nothing's going to work right. Um, we're not going to actually have our textures until this function runs later. Now I'm going to do another thing. So up here, we, we called some code. Not, not this one. That's, this is the code. This is the git uniform that I passed, uh, that I moved over into another location. We don't need this here anymore because we've declared it when we're setting up all of our connections to variables. There was this piece of code sitting up here in init textures. And what this piece of do code does is create the actual texture um, that's going to connect to GLSL or connect to our GL object in JavaScript and that we're going to use for binding and other things. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. But I found it confusing that we were creating the texture in init textures, but we're actually using it down here where we're doing all of this other GL setup, right? Our setup in init textures is really about getting this, this thing to load. This is all JavaScript images. And then we just call another function, which deals with all the GL stuff. So I've taken this piece, which the book had up here in init textures, and moved it down here to um, syn texture because I find that to be a less confusing place. It's got all my GL stuff grouped together. I think this makes more sense. One other change here I've made is I've removed a whole bunch of parameters. So we were passing parameters from a, from this function to this function. There was a long parameter list. I think it's conceptually much more clear. If after I load the image, I basically send this image to GLSL. And so now the only parameter that I have is this image to send it down. So let's talk about how are we going to actually send it to GLSL. So we need to create a texture. This is, this is creating a texture on the actual uh, GPU. It's telling, it's telling GL to go do that. This command has to do with uh, the way the image is flipped. So when it's stored in the image file, maybe y, y0 is at the top, and then the numbers go down, but maybe in GLSL we want Y0 to be at the bottom and then to go up. So this is doing flipping around. This is going to say activate texture unit 0. So there's eight texture units, and we can store different textures in diff different units. So here we're sending the texture unit 0. We're going to bind the texture. This is similar to binding our other variables. Um, we're setting up some parameters about how are we going to use this texture. And here is where we actually are sending this, specifying the information that we want to use. So uh, this image, right? This is the image that got passed in. This is the image that exists in JavaScript, and this is where we're going to send it so that it lives on the GPU. And we're going to tell our variable use sampler to go to texture unit zero. Okay, so let's just quickly take a look how I ended up. In my main, right, this is my main function here, um, I just have a call to init textures, the same as I'm initializing GLSL and connecting variables and other things. Inside my init textures, all I'm doing is loading an image, right, this is the, the where I set the sources where I load, and then I'm setting some function, and then once I've done the load, I'm going to send that image to the texture unit zero. And here I've renamed my function again because I decided that it was even more clear to call it this. Uh, because inside this function, I'm actually specifying exactly which texture unit. So I've changed my function name to be set. I'm sending the image to texture zero. And then inside of the, and the only thing I need to pass it is the image. And so then inside here, I'm going to send this image to texture zero. And there's a couple places where I'm specific to texture zero right here. And then I also have to say which sampler is it that, I, that I'm using. So later, if I want to have multiple textures, I can just replicate this function. Uh, and then I'm going to be in a good position. 
If I want to add more textures later, um, I can I can add more texture loading here. If I want to load up some additional image files, and then my main doesn't change. So now I feel that I've got some reasonable organization that's going on in my code. Of course, you could try to be smarter, and instead of saying, oh, I'm going to copy this function and make a bunch of versions of it, you could have some case statements and switches and stuff in here to make it work better. But I think this is reasonably clear. Of course, I've got it stuck in a random place in my file, um, but my overall, where have I organized my code? All the GL things are together. All the image loading in JavaScript is together. And all of my initializing of connecting uh, JavaScript to GLSL is all back up in this connecting variables function.